Welcome to Virtual Office Hours, Eight Essential Tips for First-Time Takers, brought to you by the American Bar Association and JD Advising. We're excited to have Heather Buck with us to provide tips for passing the bar exam on the first time. Heather graduated cum laude and in the top 10% of her class at Wayne State University Law School. She received numerous scholarships and awards at Wayne State, including the Patrick J. Bucket Award, which is given to the top first year law student in the legal research and writing course. She also served on the Wayne Law Review's executive board as the production editor. Heather has passed the Michigan bar exam and the California bar exam. After law school, Heather spent about three years clerking for various judges at the Third Judicial Circuit of Michigan. She also has experience in no-fault litigation and contract and employment law. Heather has been at JD Advising since 2018. She teaches JD Advising's Uniform Bar, bar Exam and California Bar Exam courses. She also tutors private students for the Bar Exam, all first-year law student classes, and for the MPRE. Heather, the floor is all yours. Thank you so much, Tracy. Um, so just to get started, a couple kind of administrative things. I'm gonna be going over this PowerPoint today. There is a handout that correlates to it. Um, I believe you should have been sent a copy of the handout. Um, if not, Hannah, I believe can post a link to where you can download the handout in the chat box if you want to download it and follow along. Um, I will also be taking questions. This is office hours, so this is a great opportunity for you guys to ask questions about the bar exam as well. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to send them in through the Q&A on Zoom. I will go through the questions that are in the Q&A box after I go through the PowerPoint, and I will answer as many of them as I can. Um, so today's presentation is about the bar exam. I know most of you are probably in your third year of law school, <clears throat> uh, getting ready to start bar prep, thinking about the bar exam that's coming up. And it is a pretty daunting task. Um, it can be a little bit overwhelming. So I wanna give you some tips today so that you kind of know what to expect and also to make sure that you get started on the right foot as you start bar prep in the next couple of weeks or in the next uh, couple of months, whenever you're ready to get started on bar prep. So we're gonna talk about eight tips that you can implement to make bar prep work well for you. And then we'll also talk about some things that you can start to do now, if you're ready and kind of eager and anticipating bar prep and wanna get started right away. My first tip is to work on memorization. Um, this might seem kind of like an obvious tip, but I wanna kind of talk about this for a minute. This is the first tip for a reason. I think it's probably the most important. Throughout law school, uh, you probably experienced a lot of open book law, uh, final exams. That was my experience, at least. I think I only had one closed book exam. Um, so a lot of law professors offer open book exams. The bar exam is not open book. So if you're like me and you're used to taking open book exams, you probably haven't practiced memorization in a while. Now you have this bar exam coming up. There are 14 subjects tested on the exam, and you don't get to walk into the exam with your material. So you do have to have this information memorized. I want to tell you a little bit what your bar prep course is probably going to look like. Um, a lot of bar prep courses start about mid-May, and they're usually about an eight to 10 week course. So what typically happens is you go to lectures, you're doing practice problems, you're getting this new information, those 14 subjects for about eight to 10 weeks. And then there's a couple weeks after those lectures, after that course ends before the bar exam. And here's what happened to me when I did bar prep the first time right out of law school. Um, I did my bar prep class. I went to all these courses. They would give you the information in the lecture. And then they'd say, OK, now go home and do some practice problems about this information. And I think the idea is that if you're exposed to it enough, it'll start to sink in and it'll kind of stick with you. And I got to the end of that eight to 10 week course and I didn't have any of it memorized. I thought to myself, the bar exam is in two weeks and I have to have this stuff memorized. So I had to spend those final two weeks cramming and working so hard on memorization because no one really emphasized to me upfront 
that I needed to spend some time specifically memorizing. So I am here to tell you, if you start working on memorization from day one, and you keep in your mind that you need to have all of this information memorized, you're going to make yourself, uh, you're going to make your job easier. And you're going to be really happy with yourself that you put that upfront work in when it comes to those final couple of weeks right before the bar exam. I'll talk about what memorization can look like in a little bit. Um, I'll give you some additional tips. It could be different for everyone. And we do have a lot of information about this on our website. I'll point you to some additional resources for what exactly you could do to memorize. And we'll continue to talk about this. But I just want to emphasize, first of all, the extreme importance of memorization for the bar exam. The second tip is to speed up your lectures if you are not an auditory learner. Um, if you are watching pre-recorded bar prep lectures, so if you're not in a live class and it's a pre-recorded lecture, you most likely have the opportunity to set your video that you're watching to one and a half times speed or even two times speed. And there are some really good reasons to do this. If you are the type of person who goes to lecture, you go to class, you go to a lecture, and you're just there to get the information. You find yourself taking notes, filling in the blanks and the outlines that you have, getting all of that information. And then you leave the lecture and you think to yourself, okay, now I need to go digest this because I don't know what I just actually heard. That means you're not like, an auditory learner. If you're just watching the lecture or going to lecture to get the information and then processing it later, try to get that information as quickly as possible by watching the videos on one and a half times speed or double speed, just to save yourself that time. And then that's going to give you more time to be able to go back through that information and, and digest that information. Now, if you are an auditory learner and you find that you do actually understand as you're sitting in lecture and you're learning, it's not a bad idea to um, watch those lectures on normal speed um, because then you will give yourself a chance to digest it as you go. So this is something you could tailor to yourself depending on what type of learner you are. The third tip is to memorize one outline per subject. Um, every company, every bar prep company has its own outlines. This is a sample on the screen of JD Advising's outline. Barbary has their own outlines. Themis has their own outlines. We all write our own outlines. One thing that I, I've seen students do, and I, I will say I do see this more with people who are repeat takers, people who um, take a bar prep course, they're unsuccessful, so then they take a different bar prep course. They like to compare and contrast outlines. So I'll get students who are in JD Advising's course who've already taken, let's say, Barbary or Themis, and we're going through the JD Advising outline, and they'll say, well, wait a minute. Barbary used a slightly different word. Barbary said this instead of whatever word JD Advising has used. So which one is it? You are going to drive yourself crazy if you get hung up on those tiny details and get into the habit of kind of nitpicking those differences. Pick one set of outlines that you like that works for you and stick to it. Learn from that set of outlines. Every bar prep company will give you outlines that have everything that you need to pass the bar exam. You can have just Barbary's outlines and that's enough to pass the exam. You can have just JD Advising's outlines and that's enough to pass the exam. You do not need to try to pick up additional pieces of informa information from other outlines. Um, there's already just so much information to learn for this exam that if you get that into the weeds, it's not likely a good use of your time. So pick one set of outlines that you like, that explains the law well, that seems to be working for you, and stick with that one set. The fourth tip is to use released MBE questions. The NCBE, which is the National Conference of Bar Examiners, they write the multiple choice portion of the bar exam for every jurisdiction. Everyone except Louisiana uh, administers the same multiple choice portion of the bar exam. This is called the MBE or the multi-state bar exam. Uh, if you're taking the uniform bar exam, the written portion is the MEE, the multi-state essay exam, and the MPT, the multi-state um, practical or professional exam if, or test, forget exactly what the, the P stands for. Um, but the National Conference of Bar Examiners writes the MBE for everyone, and they also write the MEE and the MPT. 
So the National Conference of Bar Examiners has released a number of old questions. So questions that have been uh, have appeared on older bar exams, they don't use them anymore. So they've released them for you to practice with. And we strongly suggest that you use real released questions as you're practicing for the exam. If you're not sure if your bar prep company is using real questions, um, if they didn't tell you that they're real questions, they're probably not real questions. Bar prep companies that use real questions typically advertise these are real questions because they have to pay a pretty hefty licensing fee to be able to use real questions. And so they want to make sure that you know the value of what you're getting for the money you're spending on their bar prep course. Um, so the reason why we highly recommend using real questions is because this is going to give you the best idea of what the questions on the bar exam are going to look like. The questions that aren't real questions, if you have a bar prep company and they're giving you questions that aren't these real released questions, they are still a great way to learn the material and make sure that you understand these legal concepts. They're not, though, the best way to make sure you um, kind of know what to expect the day of the exam. I get a lot of students who tell me that they use these non-real questions, and then the day of the exam, they show up and they say, those questions on the exam did not look anything like the questions that I was doing during practice. So I think using some real questions, you could incorporate them into your bar prep cl uh, class. If you're taking a class that doesn't use real questions, you can make sure you're taking a class that uses real questions is really going to help you on the exam because this exam is not only about knowing the material that's being tested, it's also kind of about knowing how to take this exam. So using the real questions that um, the NCBE has previously released will help you kind of master that aspect of taking this exam. The NCBE sells their questions so you can uh, purchase them directly from the NCBE. JD Advising sells just questions. Um, you can buy just the NCBE questions from us. You can buy access to our QBank um, to get those questions, which is a platform, an electronic platform where you can do the questions. Adaptabar uses the released questions. So you can definitely find a source to supplement your bar prep with real questions if you do have a bar prep course that isn't using real questions. The fifth tip is to personalize your schedule. Um, if you're taking a bar prep course, which hopefully you are, um, that is that is not really a main tip here, but I will say um, if this is your first time taking the bar exam, you really should take a bar prep course because they're going to guide you toward what you need to do to most efficiently prepare for this exam. They're going to give you a schedule. They're going to give you a calendar, kind of like the sample calendar you see here that tells you kind of what to do every day over the next couple months of bar prep. Um, you should feel free to personalize that schedule. And I say this kind of with a grain of salt. So you can see this schedule here, if you can see it up on the screen, the first couple days of the schedule say real property. So um, you have three days where you're going to be going through the real property lectures, learning real property, getting that information. The days that don't have a subject assigned, that doesn't mean you have a day off from bar prep. That just means you're not getting new information those days. So those blank days on the calendar following real property would be the days to go back and learn real property, do practice questions and things like that. I would stick to the calendar in terms of what subjects they tell you to cover. So for instance, here, I would stick to the calendar and do real property that first week of your bar prep. I would do torts the second week of bar prep. I would do evidence the third week of bar prep as those are assigned on the calendar, where I think you should feel absolutely free to customize your schedule is with what you're doing day to day. We already kind of talked about this with watching the videos. If you're not really getting a lot out of sitting in the lecture, if you're just there to gather the information and then go take it and study later on, try to speed those lectures up so that you're not spending quite as much time on those lectures. If your bar prep company has told you to go home after lecture and do 75 practice questions, and you feel like you're just kind of clicking through those practice questions or doing them just to do them and not really getting a lot out of them, 
I wouldn't do all 75 practice questions. I would maybe do 25 and then do something else, like uh, working your way through the outline, doing things to memorize the outline. So feel free to customize your particularly day-to-day -day bar prep schedule and don't feel tied down to doing what the bar prep company or what their calendar tells you to do. Try to be mindful of what's working for you. Ask yourself as you're doing ex exercises, am I just doing this to do it? Or do I feel like I'm actually learning from this? And if you don't feel like you're learning from it, I probably wouldn't keep that on your calendar because there's just so much to do over these couple of months that you're studying for, bar, for the bar exam that if you're wasting time doing something that's not helpful, that's not great. So feel free to uh, customize your own schedule. So I included here um, a sample kind of overall schedule. So you can see the different subjects that we recommend for our students in our class covering each week. So in the first week, you cover real property and family law. Second week, you could cover contracts and secure transactions. Um, this is what I would stick to. I would stick to what the like, what subjects they tell you to cover. That way, you know you're going to be able to get through all 14 of those subjects. There's also a good chance that they put the subjects in the order they're in for a reason. We always start with real property because real property is usually the hardest subject for students on the bar exam. So we start with it so that it's the first thing you do. You have um, all the rest of our prep to keep coming back to it if you're struggling. And also that means you get a chance to kind of sit and work with real property without any other subjects taking up space in your mind yet. All you have to think about is real property as you're starting that subject. The other subjects are put in place accordingly. Um, you could move them around a little bit, but I'd probably recommend trying to stick to the order of the subjects that the company gives you. But what you can do is ad adapt your day-to-day -day schedule. So this is a sample schedule of what your day could look like. Where you can see this person is listening to lecture in the morning, spending some time memorizing in the afternoon. Then they do essays um, in that blue section in the evening and then multiple choice questions, MBE questions later at night. Um, your bar prep company might not set aside two to three hours for memorization, but if you find that you really start to understand the material better, if you take a couple hours to just sit with the material and work on memorization, you should maybe cut back on how much time you're spending watching the lectures or doing those practice problems so that you have time to just sit with the material. And that's where you can kind of customize your schedule. The sixth tip is do not just rewrite your outlines word for word or retype them word for word. I think one thing that students do is they um, confuse do like working with learning. Just because you're doing something does not mean that it's a good use of your time. A tip that someone once told me that sticks with me is if you are studying with the TV on, you're not really studying. So if you're sitting there just kind of retyping your outline with the TV on and you're kind of thinking about the outline, kind of thinking about whatever's on the TV, that's not efficient studying. Um, if you are studying, studying is hard work. You should feel pretty tired after you're doing it and not just doing something with the end goal of saying, okay, I finished this, I retyped my whole outline, did you learn anything from it? Do you remember what you retyped? Um, so be really careful with what you're doing and make sure again that what you're doing is actually helping you. It's working for you. It's helping you understand and learn this material. And it's not just something that you're doing just to say that you did it. Same th thing is true. That tip is also true for things like multiple choice questions. If you're just clicking through multiple choice questions to get them done and say that you did them, not a great use of your time. So even if that means that you do 10 multiple choice questions instead of 30, but you do those 10 in a meaningful way and you learn from them and you understand the law better after going through them, that is a way more productive use of your time than just clicking through 30 multiple choice questions just to knock that set out and say that you did them. The seventh tip kind of goes along with number six. Don't try to condense all of your outlines into flashcards. I made this mistake. I thought that I was a flashcard learner because that's how I learned in undergrad when I tried to memorize things. I made flashcards. So I went into bar prep thinking that I was going to make flashcards to memorize. It takes forever to make flashcards for all of the information that's tested on the bar exam. I'm here to tell you that from personal experience. And what a lot of students find 
is that they um, make the flashcards and it takes so long that they don't even have time to review the flashcards. I do think that there's a meaningful way that you can incorporate flashcards into studying if you are a flashcard learner. Number one, there are companies that have pre-made flashcards. A lot of students find those helpful to be able to use the flashcards to quiz themselves. Then you're not spending the time making them, um, but you still get the benefit of using them to learn the material. I also think that there are ways to make your own flashcards for small sections. If you find things that are just super confusing or really hard to remember, like all of the exceptions to hearsay, make a small set of flashcards for that particular topic. Make a flashcard for the rules that you get wrong as you're doing practice multiple choice questions and you find that certain things just aren't clicking for you, make flashcards for those things so that you can go back over those and rep uh, repetitively review them and hopefully get them to stick as you continue to study. But I would not recommend sitting down and making flashcards for all 14 subjects of the bar exam. The eighth tip, this is the final tip, is to remember your goal is to pass the bar exam, not to just complete a certain percentage of your course. Most bar prep courses have this little percentage tracker that shows you how much of the course you've completed. And a lot of bar prep courses also have some sort of incentive. Like if you complete 75% of our course and you don't pass, you can take our course again for free. I have talked to so many students and I've been here myself because I had this too and I went through bar prep who are way too hung up on finishing that 75% or finishing the course to 100% completion. And as I said before, a lot of times what the courses do is they'll give you like 75 multiple choice practice questions to do. And so in order to get that completion percentage tracker to go up, you'll find yourself just kind of clicking through them and doing them just for the sake of doing them. And you um, will, uh, you want to keep in mind that the goal is not to just do these things so that your percentage tracker goes up. The goal is to pass the bar exam. So keep this in mind. If As you are doing things that your course has assigned, as you're going through these exercises, ask yourself if it's helping. If it is not something that's helping you, if you don't find this to be a useful exercise, don't do it. Um, your goal is not to get that tracker to 75 or 100%. Your goal is to pass the bar exam. So do the things that you can tell are helping you understand the material that's more likely going to help you pass the bar exam. I have a few tips, um, additional tips on things you can do now to get started studying for the bar exam if you're ready to dive in or want to get kind of a jump start. Uh, the first is to start your BART application early. I just talked to a student last week. Um, she graduated last year. She graduated in 2022. She was going to sit for the July 2022 BAR exam. She ended up deferring, but she told me as she was prepping to sit for last July's exam, she hadn't heard from character and fitness, and it made her really stressed out. She's deferred to this year. She's going to take it this upcoming July. And she said to me last week, I'm so glad that I have my character and fitness application completed and I have my results back because it's one less thing for me to stress about going into this exam. So try to keep that in mind. Get that stuff in as quickly as you can. I know sometimes there are holdups that some people have really complicated applications. Some states are slower than others in terms of getting your results back to you but try to get on top of that stuff as early as possible so that it's one last thing weighing on you going into the bar exam. Be aware of the costs that are associated with the bar exam. Make sure you're kind of thinking about budgeting, allocating for the next couple of months. If you haven't already paid your um, application fee to sit for the exam, your bar prep course fee, you're thinking about your living expenses. I'm prob sure probably most of you aren't working while you're studying for the bar exam. Um, things like your character and fitness application. If you want to sign up for additional like supplemental resources, tutoring, things like adapt -a bar where you're buying additional things to help you prep for the bar exam. Try to think about some of those things and make sure you've budgeted for these so that, again, it's not one more thing that's sitting on your plate stressing you out. Try to take as many of the stressors off your plate now so that you can just focus on doing your best on the exam. 
Uh, the third tip is this is a great time to start learning more about the bar exam that you're taking. Um, I didn't really understand what the bar exam was going to look like, what was on it when I started bar prep. And I think if you start to look at and understand what your bar exam will look like, it's going to make it easier um, when you do start bar prep to understand what the heck is going on. Uh, most states are UBE, Uniform Bar Exam states. Not all states. I think about 40 or so states are administering the UBE now. Um, other states like California and Florida don't administer the UBE. They write their own bar exam. But just as a sample, if you are taking the Uniform Bar Exam, this is what the exam will look like. 50% of the exam is the MBE, which is the multiple choice portion of the exam. The other 50% is the written portion. The written portion makes is con, uh, consists of the multi-state performance test. That's the P I couldn't think of earlier. The MPT and the multi-state essay exam. I think this is really helpful to keep in mind as you start bar prep. People often go into bar prep super nervous about multiple choice questions. You probably didn't see a lot of multiple choice questions in law school. Um, so it's probably answering those types of questions isn't a skill you're super comfortable with or familiar with at this point. And I think people forget that that's only half the exam. So even though yes, multiple choice questions can be nerve wracking, um, they can be stressful. There's a lot that goes into them. Not only do you have to know the law, you have to kind of think through how they're asking the question. Keep in mind that there's a whole other half of the exam that you need to think about as well. Also, a lot of people tend to forget about the multi-state performance test, that MPT, or they just ignore it. Um, you're going to be writing a lawyerly task, like a memo or a brief. And I think students think, I've done that before. I don't need to worry about that. And they don't really put a lot of time into practicing or studying for that portion of the exam. But it is worth 20% of your score. So keeping in mind where your points are coming from will help you as you start bar prep and thinking about what's going to be important as you're putting together a study schedule and thinking about how you're going to spend your time. There's more information on this slide about what each of those portions of the exam looks like. I'm going to move on to tip number four, which is to get the MPRE out of the way. Now, I almost took this slide out of here because if you notice the dates, the next MPRE isn't until August. We did just miss the, the March MPRE. So if you are taking the July bar exam and you have not taken the MPRE yet, um, unfortunately, there is not another MPRE before the exam to be able to get it out of the way, you will have to wait until August to take it. I did still keep this slide in here because I wanted to point something out about this. Every state is a little bit different in terms of their timing requirements for the MPRE, how, um, in, like how long after you pass the exam, your MPRE score is good for, um, how quickly after you pass the bar exam, you have to pass the MPRE in order for that score to be good. So keep this in mind. Um, especially if you haven't passed the MPRE yet. Some states, for instance, say if you haven't passed the MPRE and then you don't pass the bar exam, you can't take the bar exam again until you pass the MPRE. So every state's a little different. Um, if this is something that is still on your plate, maybe look into your state's timing requirements just so that you don't um, fall into a trap or run into any additional problems with regard to the timing that you get your bar exam and MPRE scores. The final tip is feel free to start bar prep early. Um, you might still be waiting on your materials if your course hasn't sent them out to you yet. There are plenty of resources where you can get started on bar prep right away. We offer a primer course. It is geared toward 3Ls. Um, so it's meant to be completed during your final semester of law school where you can kind of get your toes wet and start dipping into a little bit of bar prep early. There are so many super helpful resources in here, how to memorize, how to write an essay, um, how to study for the bar exam. We go over things like study schedules in more detail. So if you're looking for some resources now because you're eager to get started, that is a really great tool and resource. Same thing with the five minute per day series. Taking five minutes per day to learn one little piece of the law that's ultimately going to help you and maybe make bar prep that much easier when you get to that law, that portion of bar prep um, is going to take a little bit off your plate later on. So if you're ready to get started, these resources are both free. 
Um, so I highly recommend thinking about something that you can get started on right now uh, if you wanna kind of ease your anxiety and start waiting a little bit into bar prep. We offer a ton of other services at JD Advising. Um, this is about bar prep, so I'm not gonna go into detail about our other things right now. But what I do wanna do is introduce you quickly to my colleague, Hannah. Uh, if you do have questions about JD Advising, our products, services, our company, Hannah's our account executive. And so she is a great resource and she's just here to say hello to you. Thanks, Heather. Hi, everyone. As Heather said, my name is Hannah McNeese, and I'm the account executive here at JD Advising. I also just, also just want to say I'm a licensed attorney here in the state of Michigan, and I am a personal testament to how fabulous JD Advising's materials truly are as I use them myself to pass the bar exam. So thank you so much for tuning in today. We know that the bar exam can be stressful and kind of tricky to navigate, so we really do hope this has provided some clarity and given you some tools to get a jump start start on studying if you'd like. Um, as Heather mentioned, we have tons of great services, both free and paid. Um, if you're one of those people that falls into the MPRE category that you haven't tackled that yet, we have a free course. We have lots of free options for bar prep as well. And then we also have courses. Um, we are available to chat at any point. Our contact info is on the page here. We do have free 15-minute consultations and we're more than welcome or you're more than welcome to reach out by email or phone at any point at all. All. So I'm going to turn it back over to Heather. And as she said, we will stick around to answer any questions that you have. Thanks, Hannah. <clears throat> um, I did see one question in the Q&A inbox. So um, the question was, how many hours per day and per week do bar programs usually schedule studying? We treat our bar prep program like a full-time job. Um, so we say that you should be spending about 40 hours a week studying. This is especially true for the uh, first time you take the exam. When we get repeat takers, um, we can kind of customize that schedule a little bit depending on their strengths and weaknesses. But I do think going into your first bar exam, thinking about treating this like a full-time job is a great idea. Now, that being said, um, if you do have the ability, the mental capacity to spend a little bit more time than that on bar prep. So if you're spending Monday through Saturday and you take Sundays off, or if you go Monday through Sunday, but you take evenings off, um, I think that will only benefit, benefit you. I've been at JD Advising for um, a little over five years, I believe. And at this point, the number one thing that I see as a correlation between um, a student studying and their likelihood of success on the exam is how much work they put in. I can usually make a pretty educated guess about whether my students are going to pass or not if I know how much work they put in. And the students who put in the work, who took it seriously, who didn't take huge breaks, um, they didn't take time off, um, they worked through the weekends, more the more likely succeed. Um, that's not a guarantee. I don't want to say that that happens every single time. Um, because certainly things happen and sometimes people don't pass the bar exam, but putting the work in almost always pays off in my experience. So the more time you can put in, the better off you'll be. Um, the next question says, do the tips work also for LLMs? All the tips that I provided today, I think are um, extremely applicable to people who are LLM students. We do get a lot of LLM students at JD Advising. Um, who maybe went to law school in another country and have come here to do an LLM program and sit for a bar exam. I do think that there are a lot of um, obstacles to LLM students. You probably didn't take a lot of the courses that are on the bar exam in law school, so you might need a little bit more time. I know things like constitutional law you might not be as familiar with. Um, the civil rules of civil procedure might be a little bit foreign. So giving a little bit of extra time to some of those subjects, if you are an LLM student sitting for the bar exam, is always a great idea. Uh, the next one says, is it possible to get a head start on the bar exam if you still need to take an LLM program to be eligible to sit for the bar exam? You sure can. Um, you can start to become more familiar with the subjects that are tested on the exam, the format of the exam, what the multiple choice questions look like. 
think about the subjects, um, looking at the subjects and thinking about maybe some of the subjects, kind of like I was just talking about that might be more difficult for you, constitutional law, civil procedure, maybe something like corporations, maybe secured transactions, depending on what your LLM program is in, um, starting to look at some of those foreign subjects a little bit more closely, even though you're not quite ready to sit for the bar exam is never a bad idea. All right, this question says, can you expand on memorizing? My school had open book exams as well. Do you suggest memorizing verbatim or understanding and putting the rule into your own words? Um, whatever works for you. I've seen both. Some people just can't memorize the rules word for word. And so they need to kind of understand, visualize, and be able to explain the rule. If you find that the law is an area that maybe isn't as easy to understand, maybe you're just memorizing the rule word for word because you're not quite sure what it means. But in order to be able to spit it out, you spit it out word for word. So you memorize it word for word. Sometimes too on the bar exam, the exact language is important because sometimes like multiple choice questions, um, you do have to pick out the correct answer that correctly states the law. And so you are looking for that precise language in that answer choice. But some of the things in terms of memorization tips or tricks, what um, the best thing that works for me and one of the number one things that I recommend is taking your outline, looking at it, reading through maybe a page or so of the outline or looking at a, a chunk of the outline, cover it up, see if you can say it out loud uncover it, see how you did, cover it up and do it again. Um, the key to memorization is repetition. You're not gonna look at something, read it and just have it memorized. You're not gonna do this one time and have it memorized. So doing this exercise where you uh, see if you can say your out that chunk of your outline out loud, cover it, see how, or do it again, uncover it, see how you did, keep doing it until you feel comfortable with it. Do that one day, then do it again the next day and do it again the third day. Um, the more times you do this, the more likely it's gonna stick with you all the way through to the bar exam. That's one of the tough things about this is the stuff that you're memorizing but all the way at the beginning of bar prep, you have two months to keep that in your mind till the end of July when it comes time to take the bar exam. So you really do have to work at this over the course of bar prep to make sure that it sticks and that it stays. Um, and like I said, there's a ton of other memorization tips because everyone learns a little bit differently, both on our website, um, they're available in that 3L primer course. Um, so, and these are all, those would be free resources too, if you're looking for some additional memorization tips. Um, I don't see any additional questions in the inbox, but thank you guys for those of you who did submit them. Yeah, thank you everyone for joining us and a special thank you to Heather Buck and the JD advising team. We wish you the best as you finish up law school and prepare for the bar exam. Take care, everyone.